All right, today we're going to take a look at some integration rules for our exponential functions. Um, I've got a couple of them written out over here on the left. All right, let's say we are trying to integrate e to the u du, where u is going to be a function of x. All right, when we uh, integrate that, it will end up being an e to the u plus c, and you are going to have to do like a u substitution on that, probably letting your exponent um, be what you uh, let u be. All right, um, another one is when we are integrating a to the u, du. All right, in this case, u, again, is going to be a function of x, um, but your a right here will be a constant. So in other words, it's going to be a number. It must be um, greater than zero, but it cannot be equal to one. All right, so this might look like integrating, you know, six raised to the two x or something along those lines. All right, uh, the formula then would be an a to the u over the natural log of a plus c. All right, um, so uh, we'll do um, a couple examples with this uh, first formula, and then I'll do an example with the bottom formula as well. All right, so for this first example, I want to integrate um, 5x e raised to the negative x squared dx. All right, so um, recommendation done, might not always work, but this would be my recommendation to let your u be whatever is in that exponent up there. All right, so we're going to let u equal a negative x squared. All right, so du is going to be a negative 2x dx. And solving all the way down for our dx, we would have a du over a negative 2x equaling our dx. Okay, coming up here. All right, substituting back in, I'm going to have the integral of a 5x e. I'm going to substitute in my u. All right, now I'm going to substitute in for the dx, du over a negative 2x. All right, so hopefully looking at that, you can see that the x's are going to cross out, and I can pull out a negative 5 halves. All right, so in my next step, I'm going to pull out that negative 5 halves out in front of my integral. Then I will be integrating an e to the u du. All right, which is what we wanted. We wanted to get down to our formula. When we integrate an e to the u du, we get e to the u plus c. So I'm going to have a negative 5 halves e to the u plus c. And now my last step, I can plug back in what I have for u. So negative 5 halves e to the negative x squared plus c. All right, relatively short and straightforward for that first example. All right, for my second example, um, let's do this one with a trig function. All right, so we're going to integrate sine x e to the cosine x dx. All right, so again, my recommendation would be to let your u be whatever that exponent is right there. So I'm going to do let u equal cosine x. All right, du then will be equal to a negative sine x dx. And when I solve for dx, I get a du over negative sine x equaling dx. All right, coming up here and replacing and doing some substitutions, I will have the integral of a sine x times e to the u. And substituting in the dx, I will have a du over a negative sine x. All right, um, the sine x's are going to cross out, and I still have a negative left there in the bottom, so I can pull that um, negative 1 out in front of the integral. So I'll pull out the negative 1, and I will be then down to integrating an e to the u du, which is what we wanted. Rewriting the formula up here so we'd have a reference thing, integrating e to the u du is e to the u plus c. So then I will have a negative 1 e to the u plus c. And I can replace my u with what I originally let it to equal there. So I'll have a negative um, e raised to the cosine x plus c. All right, so again, another pretty straightforward example there with that top formula. Okay, now let's take a look at the second formula where we're integrating a constant raised to some function of x. All right, so there's my constant and there's my function of x. Okay, so again, I'm still going to go with that same um, u substitution. I'm going to let it be my exponent. 
So I'm going to let u be equal to 2x plus 3. All right, then that means my du will be a 2dx. I can solve for dx there, giving myself a du over 2. All right, coming back up here in my formula and doing some substitutions. Um, I'll have the integral of 7, and then I'll replace the exponent there with my u. All right, replace the dx with a du over 2. All right, now, nothing crosses out at that point, but that's okay. I've got the 1 half right here that can be pulled out in front of my integral, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to pull out the 1 half, and then I'll have an integral of 7 to the u du, which is what I wanted because I want a constant raised to the u du. All right, so now, right here, all I have to do is implement this formula right here. So I will have the 1 half that's sitting out in front. Okay, implementing this formula, I would have a to the u, all right, so my a is 7 in this case, so I will have a 7 raised to the u all over natural log of a, which is the base right there, so natural log of 7, all right, and then plus c. All right, so let's indicate what we did right there, use formula. Okay, now... Um, let's see, let's substitute back in what our u is at this point and go ahead and multiply the 2 in there. So I'll have a 7 raised to the 2x plus 3 all over a 2 natural log of 7 plus c. All right, now, um, remembering some of your laws of exponents here, jumping that frog back up there on top would probably be a good idea. All right, so then to clean up the answer a little bit, 7 raised to the 2x plus 3 all over a natural log of 7 squared. And you might as well go ahead and square that out. Um, so a 7 to the 2x plus 3 all over natural log of 49 plus C. All right, for that final answer there. All right, so um, three examples of using your um, integration formulas for exponential functions.